Hello again, this is Alex with MasterChairsTrading.com and this is Market Recap for Friday, April 1st, 2022. As always, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to this channel and share this video with others. So stocks uh, managed a small gain for the week. Uh, so we'll see where this is going. Uh, high yield bonds are again retesting support levels. We'll, I'll show you what those levels are. Treasury bonds may have found bottom. So this is uh, causing a uh, yield curve to flatten and invert in some places. And I'll show you why this could be bad for stocks. But market breadth actually is pointing to the upside. So I'll show you uh, my favorite measure of market breadth and how I use it. Gold miners have closed at new 52 week highs. And I'll show you also a trade that I actually have opened right now, Newmont Mining. And Bitcoin has cleared an important resistance level. So possibly more upside for Bitcoin. If you are a subscriber, then stay tuned. I'll send a separate overview for all of these uh, stocks. If you are not yet a subscriber, consider going to masterchartstrading.com and signing up for one of the products. I have three products. I have trading indicators, which are these lines on the chart. I'll show you how they work in a second. I have the newsletter. So again, if you're a subscriber, I'm going to send out uh, various, uh, or I send out daily uh, alerts on various stocks, and then I send out a weekly overview. And if you want to get both the newsletter and the trading indicators, consider signing up for the Ultimate Bundle. Everything is currently on sale, so sign up before it's over. All right, let's look at S&P 500. Uh, these are futures, S&P 500 futures, or if they're continuous futures. Uh, and you can see on this chart we have the green, blue, red, and yellow horizontal lines. So these are my indicators. I use them pretty much exclusively to trade. Again, you can have them on your chart if you just have a trading view, free trading view account. You don't need to have a paid, paid account. Now the way they work is uh, when the stock closes above the blue support resistance line, we just go ahead and buy it. And then usually it continues higher and we trail higher. Uh, if these are futures, so we can actually trade um, on intraday chart as well. So for example, if you like, you know, day trading, I don't recommend it. But if you really like it, here's a five minute chart of futures. And I wanted to show today is a really good example of how uh, a re reversal looks like. So here's a five minute chart and you can see continuous futures They've been dropping um, for a while. So this is the last, last time it was in the bull market here on the 31st of March, about 1 in the morning. And then right there where I'm hovering at 4 in the morning, it's, it entered the bear market. And then we just continue to sell it short at the red line. You can see very nice opportunities. Another opportunity to sell, to sell short at the red line. But then we saw something with a reversal. So now we see a close above the blue support resistance line right there, a fake to the bottom, and now definitely this huge candle. Look at this five minute chart candle um, at 1250 here. Uh, this is California time, I believe. Let me see. Yeah, Los Angeles. But uh, this is clearly a reversal to me. So if you're trading on five minute chart, you can do this. And you know, if in the, on Monday it opens, most likely will continue higher. But we humans like to trade on daily charts. So on daily chart right now, this is looking like a hammer candlestick. And it is exactly where I want this hammer to be. Uh, so this ha today's hammer candlestick, well, maybe it's doji hammer. So this is a uh, price came down through the blue line and then uh, rallied above it. So we, we actually have a signal. So a signal uh, right there uh, on 18th of March and a signal again today. Uh, we'll see again if we get a follow through, but it does look good. And I'll get you get in a second to a market breadth. And I think we actually have a, a bullish divergence, if anything. So this is a daily chart looking at weekly. Uh, not much has really changed. You can also trade on weekly charts. 
So if you if you're longer term investor, so for example, here's a weekly opportunity in 2020 in May 2020 and latest opportunity right there. Uh, we actually went ahead and opened it uh, in, Mar in March 14th, week of the March 14th. And so far it's been pretty good. So there is a good chance we'll make new records now. Looking at other indices, here's NASDAQ. Uh, again, this is the daily chart. So right now we haven't yet reached this blue support resistance line, the bullish levels. You know, we can actually see them. We went to the bearish levels here at, in early March. So we're looking at uh, a possibility that you know, if, if S&P 500 is above the blue line, there is a good chance that NASDAQ will also do the same thing. In other words, the correlations are huge between the NASDAQ and S&P. So if um, S&P continues higher, NASDAQ most likely will do the same thing. It's very unlikely that NASDAQ will do something different. So it's looking promising, very promising, especially with today's uh, hammer-like candlestick, meaning that uh, the selling, uh, you know, even though there was selling throughout the day, uh, the bulls came in. We can look at five minute chart again. So very similar pattern. You can see big rally here at 1250. I don't know what happened. I think some kind of report happened. Uh, but overall, uh, you know, similar picture. We had look like a hammer like candlestick. Hammer like candlesticks usually represent a bottom of some sort. So fingers crossed, most likely Monday we'll see more upside. Here's Dow Jones. Dow Jones also entered the bull market right there on 29th of March. So we are uh, seeing uh, this, you know, again, correlations are very high between S&P and Dow Jones. So there is not much difference between the two as far as the technical picture goes. But, you know, overall, I think uh, if S&P goes higher than NASDAQ will follow. Again, today's hammer candlestick also is quite encouraging. And here are the small caps, uh, Russell 2000 small caps. These are the weakest of the bunch. Uh, you can kind of see we really came down very hard and uh, sort of several times kind of bottomed, tried to bottom here and then rallied. So we did clear this red support resistance line. Uh, but you can see that we are far away, as in, for example, D Dow Jones already closed above the blue line, meaning definitely bull market. Uh, the small caps are barely uh, just able to clear this caution line. So again, we'll watch and see where this goes. Uh, small caps have been underperforming in general of late for various reasons, probably because of the, uh, the way things are going with the supply chain disruptions and with uh, various uh, pressures such as uh, inflationary pressures uh, small caps definitely feel it more than the large caps so yes it is understandable looking at junk debt so small caps or rather the junk debt uh, is important to the overall health of the market let me show you why i think that so um, we're looking at junk debt on weekly charts now and we're looking at this indicator on the bottom here in uh, light blue. This is called correlation coefficient. This is a correlation coefficient to the S&P 500. Generally speaking, junk debt correlates highly with S&P 500. You can, you can see that most of the time junk debt is positively correlated with S&P. However, lately it's been underperforming really strongly the the junk debt has been under under severe pressure like many bonds so notice this yellow line you can kind of see it there we're literally testing it as we speak uh, let's look at daily chart it's more obvious so there is that yellow line it's 101.22 we just blew right through it and then came up and then tested it from above right there on 25th of March, 28th of March. And so far this line has held. So overall this is, you know, kind of good news. I want to see junk debt do the same thing as stocks. I do not want to see uh, poorly correlated uh, junk debt with S&P 500. 
So as of right now, I can see there was a gap here between 28th of March and 29th of March. So right now we at least closed this gap. So that's, you know, one way of looking at it positively. The negative part is that it, it you know, went, went down quite a bit today. So there's a still a good chance we're going to continue lower and again retest this yellow line. I, I'm hoping it's going to hold, but if it doesn't, then maybe stocks will be uh, following the junk debt. So again, this is important for the overall health of stock market, uh, for junk debt to be the high yield bonds to be also moving higher. Looking at treasury bonds, TLT, so uh, we are selling them short. This, you can see a couple of alerts here, one in February, one in January. And it's, it's, it's been working pretty well. Uh, and in a second, I'll get to the dynamic yield curve and I'll show you why this, why this is happening. But it feels like uh, for now, at least, the treasuries have bottomed. This is long dated treasuries, TLT. I kind of like to look pretty much at that one more uh, than the other ones. So it looks like we did bottom here. And now we're at least attempting to clear this first resistance at uh, yellow line at 132.25. We actually did close above it today. So yeah, it looks like we did clear it just barely. So looking at the, you know, as, as bonds drop, uh, yields rise. So like this is TLT treasuries. Uh, we can look at TYX or treasury yield and you can see it's rising. Yes, it makes perfect sense. So if you are able to trade uh, the yield, some some places allow, allow you to trade the yield as a uh, contract for difference. So yes, you are, you know, moving, it, it is moving higher and you should be uh, making uh, good money there. But looking at dynamic yield curve, so, um, okay, so now it's updated. This is today's uh, 1st of April 2022. So notice here where I'm hovering, it says flat. So at the very least now, right, n right now, we're looking at this yield curve as, you know, not normal. It's at least flat. So we're looking at five-year yield at around 2 point whatever, 4% while the 10-year yield is at around 2.3%. So that's actually inverted. And the same goes for 20-year yield. It's higher than the 30-year yield. Do you see what I'm trying to say? So these two things are not great. Um, and if we look at previous uh, instances of when yield curve has inverted, for example, here is one in 2007. You can see that yield curve actually uh, the short-term interest rates were actually higher than the long-term interest rates. That's not normal, and we had a bear market in stocks uh, afterwards. The same thing happened uh, back in 2000. We had the yield curve, which was inverted, and then we had also a bear market in 2000, uh, till 2003 or so. Is this happening now? So this is a normal yield, yield curve. So even up to very recently, like for example, this is February, I'm just gonna advance it. You can see how the yield curve is moving higher and actually it completely flattened. So now we're seeing uh, what we call a flat yield curve. So the next step is for the two year yields to continue higher and then it will completely invert. So is this going to be the end of the bull market? It's entirely possible. Um, so, you know, interest rates are controlled in in a way by Federal Reserve, uh, so the short-term interest rates are still quite low. But what I'm hearing is that they're going to be raising the short-term interest rates uh, to combat inflation. If they combat inflation too much, they they are risking um, a bear market and a recession. So these are interesting times as they said and additionally with the war in ukraine and the war in ukraine now spilling apparently over into russian territory uh, things are quite unnerving and when i get to gold i'll show you uh, why that those things are unnerving so right now we're seeing a flattening of the yield curve 
and uh, we may see an inversion and again once that inverts there is a good chance we will see a, a bear market and the recession all right let's move on to gold gold miners so this is gold xau usd uh, so a new breakout for gold right there latest uh, latest breakout it was on 31st of December. We have several opportunities to buy. You can see them by up arrows. So this one from February was just a tremendous run. And we're actually approaching uh, new records. I'm going to show it to you on weekly charts. So this is a weekly chart for uh, gold, XAU USD. And these are the all-time records highs right there on 3rd of August 2020 we're really close to those record highs so if you can kind of see this pattern sort of like inverted cup like a cup rather pattern um, the depth of this pattern is let me see um, well we can say it's about 20 percent so if this 20 if this uh, cup is breached to the upside and we close above it there's a really good chance we're going to continue higher for at least 20 percent so if we're around 2000 uh, we can easily go to 2200 uh, just from looking from this pattern uh, so gold right now it's literally trading at the support resistance line the support resistance line is at 1923 is, is indicated by the blue line on this chart we are buying it in fact this is an actual alert on 31st of March yesterday to my subscribers looking at gold miners so gold miners GDX this is a new 52 week high close so this is a 52-week high right there on the 8th of March, but this is actually closing at 52-week high. So this is quite, quite good news again if you're a gold bull like myself. And, uh, you know, we're looking at this continuation. Uh, so if we look at weekly chart for gold miners, you know, we're not even close to all-time highs. So I think if we break out, we can easily go towards all-time highs and even continue higher. So looking quite promising uh, the gold miners look quite promising Newmont mining so this is a weekly chart of Newmont mining I actually bought it myself right there on 14th of February at around $67 or so uh, why did I buy it so I don't really need to answer that question I don't really ask ask, ask myself question why I ask question what I ask question what am I trading I'm trading new month and, and how am I trading it I'm buying it on close above my blue support resistance line right there I bought it uh, around 14th uh, of February or week of 14th of February to be exact I bought it right there uh, on a actually I'm sorry 25th of February right, right there at $68 it's now plus 22 percent and notice where it closed it closed at new 52 week high uh, let me see if this is an all-time high actually this is an all-time high yes so this is a very good news uh, i think you know new highs breed new highs so i am i'm holding it i'm trailing it higher and let's see how high it will go again you know if gold continues higher and i think we're literally at the stop at the point where we want to be buying gold uh, and if if gold miners are any any indication i think more upside is likely so this is how i trade i really don't think too much i just look at the lines if i if i see a uh, you know a price closing above the blue sport resistance line i just buy it right there all right and coming to a close we're looking at bitcoin right now bitcoin versus us dollar so we were selling it short you can see three downside arrows basically all successful uh, latest i didn't really send any up alerts here but so far we did clear this support resistance line this is actually a signal right there on 31st of march but I'm not sure I want to sell it here. I want to wait and see what happens, especially today's action looks like a bear, um, like a potential hammer candlestick. So I'm going to wait and see what happens. 
uh, I have no problem buying it. We were buying, you know, Bitcoin, for example, here on 6th of October, uh, several opportunities back in, uh, in January of last year, tremendous opportunity back in uh, May of 2020. Let me look at this move. So, you know, same, same general principle. We're, we're just looking at the lines and we're, you know, buying or selling it according to what the lines are telling me. And right now the lines are telling me to possibly sell short, but maybe wait. So I'm going to wait a little. All right. So head over to mastercharttrading.com. Click on products. Again, I have a sale going on right now. So indicators only twenty nine ninety five per month. Uh, newsletter is thirty nine ninety five per month, and uh, both of them together fifty nine ninety five per month. I think it's a great uh, price. So again, the indicators are these lines on the chart. You can have them on tradingview.com. Tradingview.com. You only need a free tradingview account. Once you sign up on my site, I'll open the door for you. Uh, newsletter so you get uh, alerts every day I send alerts every day and I send a weekly uh, newsletter also for the subscribers and I uh, cover all of the stocks on weekly basis as well as daily basis and again if you want to get both of them together they are currently at $59.95 per month so sign up before the sale runs out again thanks for watching and, other, and have another great training week bye bye